Good evening, welcome to my laboratory. Uh, what you're looking at here is a little 555 based charge pump inverter. It takes uh, 12 volts input, positive 12 volts with respect to ground, and then turns that into negative 12 volts with respect to ground on the output. And I have a little LED running on the output as a load. You can see I have both of the scope probe uh, reference clips clipped to the negative rail of the circuit. And I have the uh, uh, yellow probe on the positive rail and the blue probe on the final output, which is negative with respect to the ground rail. Okay, so this actually inverts the voltage of the input. And uh, we're going to look at that display on the Rigol 1054Z oscilloscope and as you can see I have assigned a couple of little labels there and that's where the baselines are input V in and V out and we're looking at both of those at uh, 5 volts per division and they're both DC coupled at the time at the moment average on the input is plus 12 volts 12.6 volts We'll be looking at fall time later. Average on the output is a minus 9.2324 volts uh, because of the load. And you can see how that is displayed on the scope's screen. We're at uh, 5 volts per division, so that's 5 and 4 more is 9. That's the output down there, negative with respect to ground. And the input is 5, 10, 12 and a half volts positive with respect to the ground. Now you can see we're at one millisecond per division. You can see that there's no ripple on the output, but there is some little spiky, ripply things on the input up there. And uh, they're very small compared to the scope's display. And if I wanted to magnify those by changing the uh, vertical setting, by the time I get to, oh, sorry, that's the wrong channel. Select channel 1 and change the vertical setting to 2 volts per division, and now you can see it's off the screen. So I can't, I might be able to move this down and then display those ripples up there. Where'd they go? playing with the trigger now, trying to get it to trigger on those guys. There they are. I might be able to move the whole trace down and display those guys at a better magnification, but there's a better way to do it, and that is to use AC coupling on the channel input. So we'll go to channel input coupling and select AC, and you can see that immediately moves that trace down to the baseline, and ideally the average should be right on the baseline. Here we can see that the average is about 250 millivolts uh, on a 5 volt per division scale. So that's almost exactly on the baseline. And now, we move the trigger down as well. And now we can amplify that trace until we actually start seeing the ripples. We turn up the time base. And get a stable trigger. And that is what we're looking at now in terms of the ripple on that top signal. We're now at 5 microseconds per division, and you can see, uh, and, and at 200 millivolts per division vertically, and if I go to 2 microseconds per division, or even 1 microsecond per division, you can start seeing some nice detail, <coughs> excuse me, in that ripple. And uh, let me expand that further. Move 
the trigger over. Let's get this down here like this. Put a different trigger setting. Trigger on the falling edge, that's right. Now we can see that that falling edge there is actually a very fast falling edge and it's somewhere in the neighborhood of 4 nanoseconds, 3.6 to 4 nanoseconds, that falling edge of that ripple. So, the AC channel coupling allows us to move the entire trace down to the baseline so that we can then amplify that trace vertically and see those ripples displayed in much more detail than we might be able to otherwise. And that's one of the major uses of uh, AC coupling on a scope. It's not for measuring AC, it's, me it's for measuring it's for blocking the DC component, which allows you then to measure the small ripples that might be riding on top of the DC on your signal. They might be. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.